In 2015, I remember a new sitcom came to town that drew a small portion of positive attention because of its casting alone. I couldn't remember anything else about it, which I presume is a bad sign, but hey, the premise is incredibly generic, so what else do you expect from me, really? There's a couple, right, and every episode focuses on one of their families. Because of this, it would have been unfair to review one episode alone, because I would only be getting one half of the show. I feel like half of me is missing. So I plan to review this show in the same way that Noah sorts his animals, two by two. You might need this. Spoiler alert, it wasn't worth watching the second episode. I watched it and it was so generic that it's barely worth talking about. I watched it anyway, but we won't be talking about it. Sorry. Richard Dreyfus, a well-known actor from works such as Jaws and Close Encounter. has turned his talents to starring in a sitcom which was weirdly not advertised anywhere. I propose we redo that 1972 spot and upgrade the images. Have you heard of this show? No, nobody has. I doubt his agents even has. And yet it starred THE Richard Dreyfus. I learned of this sitcom from a blogger back in 2015 who shared my confusion as to why a network would keep this secret. The Post described this sitcom as one on the witness protection program. Don't worry Mrs. Simpson, we've helped hundreds of people in danger. We'll give you a new name, a new job, new identities. Woo! I want to be John Elway! And that is a chef's kiss of a review. To coming attractions, tonight We'll be reviewing... My first reaction to hearing about Dreyfus's part in this sitcom was that he would be playing a conservative, stuck-up character, owning the screen because of his vast array of acting experience, including two films which are household names. It turns out that I got the guy all wrong. He actually was the first person to make me laugh on this show. Here we go! Another girl just came in. What? <laughs> Who is that? I never said she could invite a friend over. She needs someone else with whom to go wild. <laughs> nice work, sir. I just saluted. The camera's not on, no one can see me salute. That's tragic. It's safe to assume that if a man with his credibility signed up to be a part of this fiasco, then he had to have read the script and found it interesting, or even a fresh take on the genre. But I doubt that. If anything, if he read anything to do with this show, then he only read his own lines. Richard Dreyfus had as much of a clue as where his character was called as I do. I don't know where his character is called. I'm so used to millions of sitcoms shooting scenes in cars, using green or blue screens and looking less than good. However, However seeing this technique used in the opening scene to this pilot, actually, it, it, it didn't look too bad. Perhaps it was because it was set at night, so the majority of the exterior was in pure darkness, but already I think this car scene has topped every single crappy version of it on the Big Bang Theory. Oh good, I'm not keeping you from anything. If I'm praising this show for that, then it tells you two things. One. Ah, that's one. One bad. The Big Bang Theory is terrible from the writer's room to the editing booth. And two. Two. Two bad. That this show clearly doesn't have very much to praise. At first, it seems as though the sitcom would just be dealing with basic domestic issues. Does the bloke's mum like his girlfriend? Can the babysitter be trusted, etc. However, this sitcom's first step is to utilise technology to spy on a college girl. It was actually pretty creepy, despite it being driven by the protective nature. I kept waiting for something, anything to happen. And then the first big event in the episode occurred when the babysitter's friend began discussing their relationships. To keep people tuned in, the two women then took off the shirts and, um... Anne, I look like crap. I shouldn't have worn this stupid shirt. You can wear my shirt. Let's switch. Oh, perfect. Whoa. <laughs> really? Oh, we should switch bras too. Switch to the other camera. I only put in one camera, Dad. You only put in one camera? What are you, nuts? What do you think they're gonna do? Take showers in the living room? Uh, um, um. Moving right along. Moving right along. Do -do 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 -do. Playing a character that I never realized she had the range to play. If we were to draw a graph of my process, of my method, 
something like this. Sir Ian, Sir Ian, Sir Ian, action. Wizard, you shall not pass! Cut! Sir Ian, Sir Ian, Sir Ian. Angela Kinsley plays Claire, following her fame on The Office. There's a storyline where the air husband has to use Viagra, which is fine, it happens, but he also swears an unnecessary amount and is lacking in social skills on Twitter or something. I, I swear to God, your character isn't interesting. It feels strange how I only just stepped into this world and I stumble across a bunch of people finding reasons to stay in the house and watch the TV. There are multiple layers to study in the situation which unfolds in the first episode. The gang are watching the camera film in their own house whilst the drama unfolds amongst the two girls and their boyfriend. The gang are watching a show within a show. The developer of this, by the way, the script was developed from an Israeli TV show, I believe. His name is Greg Malins, and to his praise, finding so many excuses to keep people in front of a television and doing nothing else is an art in itself. Let's all be honest, the cast for this show is too large. The creator clearly misunderstood that The Office was a success, not because it had a big cast, but because the jokes were funny. I need a username, and I have a great one. Little Kid Lover, that way people will know exactly where my priorities are at. None of the characters, other than Richard Dreyfus, who we remember because he is Richard Dreyfus, are memorable enough to distinguish one from the other. A neat little detail is how the title sequence changes from episodes, showing either Oliver or Kelly walking away from their family and towards the others. Yeah, I had to google their names for that bit. Shame in it. I told you guys I would watch the second episode, but I honestly didn't enjoy watching it. There's really not much to say. You had flashbacks where they didn't even bother to de-age the characters, and more importantly, Richard Dreyfus wasn't in it. His presence was the only thing that got me through the pilot episode. The second episode achieved the impossible by somehow dragging on even longer than the first. I'd rather eat sand than watch this again. Okay, that's too far. I don't want to eat sand. I wanted this show to be good, but I understand why my only memory of it is that it starred the guy from Jaws. Have I been too mean? I feel like I've been too mean. Ah well. Yeah.